Look where we ended up. We're on the shores of Fish Trap Lake in eastern Washington in the shade of the Ponderosa. Yeah, and it is September. And here we are back for the update for full ecology. It's a, we're at another ecotone. We just can't let ecotones go yet. It's such an intriguing aspect of the natural world of which we are a part. So an intriguing part of us too. So that's really what's kind of got our attention captured is that we, every place we look, it's kind of hard for us not to find an ecotone. Because when you think about it, ecologically, the sky meeting the forest, the sky meeting any ecosystem is to, is an ecotone. Yeah, and even within the layers of the sky are different uh, aspects of the atmosphere, one pumping up against the other and creating conditions that wouldn't uh, exist if there wasn't that meeting. And in case you're just joining us for the ecotone notion, that is what an ecotone is. It's two uh, communities, ecological communities, where they join, uh, the, the apron, if you will, where they join. And it's an extremely rich, from a biodiversity, uh, aspect as well as the kinds of things that get created in that little zone where two things come together. And so the definition eco home mm -hmm. and tone attention yeah. which is kind of intriguing because as Gary mentions anytime two systems meet so the, right now the two of us you know anytime you meet with another person anytime you go and have a little conference internally with yourself Although that may be stretching it and it may seem metaphorical, but we're going to be talking about that a little more. Plus, this is not the only ecotone you're going to see. Yeah, I, you know, tension is a word we want to sort of avoid, but in this case, uh, tension does go back to one of its more original meanings, and that's uh, as a place where things that didn't exist before get born, and, and, and that can be a, um, there's an energ energetic tension in the act of creation, and that's what we're talking about here. And what I was talking about with uh, this, you're not going to see just one ecotone, is that here we are where the, the prairie and the Ponderosa forest meet the lake. So those, that's a meeting. And then we're in it too. So we meet that and then the sky meets all of us. So ecotone everywhere. We're on a little road trip and we're going yeah. to check in with you at another ecotone that we run into along the way. So stay tuned. No doubt we will. Okay. See you somewhere else down the road. Yep. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. We're here right now, and we wanted to show you. We're on the east side of the Crazy Mountains, north of the Absorcas, in the heart of beautiful Montana. Yep. Ecotones everywhere. But more than that, just perfection and beauty. So we wanted to show you. We'll tell you more about it later. Yeah. There's yeah. been a lot of talk lately about joy coming back uh, this feels like a whole lot of joy yeah so hey everybody hi everyone again yeah we did a really quick in the background you're hearing traffic and that will become relevant to what we're saying here soon and over there you're seeing Willamette Falls and well that too we'll tell you more about but we want to start by telling you what you saw just a minute ago we were in another ecotone near the crazy mountains where the prairie meets the mountain and thunderstorms often hit. And sure enough, we got a thunderstorm hit. Yeah, and that even in summer in Montana, the wind comes up and it's cold. It, were actually, it was actually hailing uh, <laughs> a little bit on us. And just, boy, it's a fresh wake up call to anybody who turns their face to it. That's what we did. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, the clouds just gather so quickly in the summertime over the Rocky Mountains. And then they make these magnificent thunderstorms. And sometimes you get caught in them. And then they pass over. And, you know, it's such an arid climate that, boom, you're dry again. But and we also just really wanted you to see that particular ecotone the prairie meeting the mountains and it's interesting that the sky holds that ecotone in some ways because the clouds or the air is rising up pushed up by the crazy mountains where it's colder can't hold as much moisture and at that elevation then it starts dropping it on the prairie which creates fabulous grass growth and used to support millions of, of bison and now supports 
Angus cattle. Yes, and we were visiting with friends of ours who are ranchers and who have been four decades engaged in regenerative agriculture to very good effect. And I'm telling you, the rain must have been coming to Montana because it wasn't like vivid green, but it shouldn't be in August. But there was a hint of green everywhere. It was very wonderful to see. And their range, because they do regenerative agriculture, as Mary just said, is in very good shape. When you look out across it, it's native grasses you see. And those native grasses tend to be way better at storing carbon, putting roots down deep than would be invasive uh, cheatgrass and other things that so often invade overgrazed ranges. So much like anything in the natural world, when, when um, you know, and we are part of the natural world. So when supported, and I guess we could use the word stewarded, although I had an interesting conversation with one rancher saying that he always thought the word steward was too aggressive. Oh. And I never, I always think of it as kind of caretaking, huh. you know, as, as listening and taking care. But something, you know, being with the land and supporting it, the way that these particular ranchers do, the, the natural world has the wisdom to know what to do. And, and to teach them. Yeah. That's the best ranchers are learning always, like the best scientists are, by, by looking to see what's going on. What's, what's the earth telling me in this season, in this year, in this decade? And, uh, you know, when you're humble enough to take your cues from the wisdom of the land, things go better. Right, and as one of our rancher friends, Hilary Zeronek, she's been on one of our very recent How It Looks From Here podcasts. As, as she says, you know, her experience over and over again is that when I think I know what's going on when I'm around cattle, when I think what's going, I know what's going on when I'm around horses or around cattle interacting with wolves or whatever, I don't have a clue. I have to take my lead from them. It has to be a collaborative effort, and yeah. I need to be in full collaboration with them. And that's how it works out. So it's wonderful for us to get to learn from these ranchers who live as part of these ecotones. Yeah, and to be reminded that everything, everything, every bird, every cow, every elk, every moose, every bear, they all have something to teach us. They're living in a world that they've done a great job over hundreds of thousands of years blending into and creating successful relationship with in a way that we haven't. And so there's always something to, to be learned. Yeah, so here we are in yet another Ecotone. Yep. <laughs> and that's the theme that we're gonna be pursuing. You know, I didn't check um, the second Tuesday, we're gonna be back for a deep dive, second Tuesday in September. We will put it on our newsletter, make sure and look for that. If you're not receiving our newsletter, please be in touch or please subscribe by going to www.fullecology.com or by writing us at connect at fullecology.com and we're happy to put you on that newsletter so that you can join us in the deep dive. And we wanted to do two months of Ecotone because we think it's such a rich, rich topic. There's another one behind us. Yes, we're at a place I've never been to before, Mary has, but it's called Willamette Falls on the, imagine this, uh, uh, Willamette River. <laughs> and uh, it was scoured out from what I hear uh, way back when the Missoula floods were going, so hundreds of thousands of years ago. And that supposedly revealed, I don't know if you can see, but these basalt cliffs next to the falls and those basalt cliffs are really really important for hosting a variety of some of them rare mosses which create little micro habitats and which have helped create along those walls really good habitat for birds for pollinators and so here again we're at a place where the terrestrial world meets the water and along that band the riparian band more magic happens than almost any other ecotone I can think of. Yeah, and this is the thing, you know, the other reason that we chose this place is because it's very evident that humans have been here. Yes. And that, and, and you can see some of this is still functioning and some of it is not. And there are efforts on the part of the humans to repair this uh, system and make sure that, or, or to, to do um, human best to restore it to what it what it has been in the past. Yeah. Um, the, the bottom line here in Ecotone seems to me, 
And we say ecotone and we say ecotone, whatever. We, it, we don't know what the preferred is. Um, the bottom line seems to be that where two ecological systems meet, there is more diversity. And you also have written about how the, sh the best sign of resilience in any ecosystem is diversity. Absolutely, yeah, the best sign of resilience, you're right, is diversity. And one side of the ecotone informs the other. You know, the river, the water, allows a plant diversity that wouldn't exist if you climbed up beyond the banks, and the plants stabilize the river grow the kinds of things that bring pollinators and other insects in, some of which fall into the river, get eaten by the fish, the fish get eaten by the osprey. So there's this exchange, a very porous uh, exchange between the river and the land along this, this ecotone that makes it a dynamic and, and potentially extremely creative environment. So we started with the Oregon coast on this particular update. and. In, in that place, you can see how humans, when they're right-sized, actually become in, come into that kind of interaction, that growthful interaction with all the other ecosystems that are there. And, in, in, and what I'd point out there is that in Oregon, the decision has been made that we're not, everybody, there's not going to be privatization of any of the beachfronts. That's not quite as radical and as complete as what we saw in Montana in the way that these particular ranchers are interacting with the thousands and thousands of acres that they have and upon which they raise Angus, is that what you said? Yeah, Much well, in the way that, that, bison, too, that bison moved across yeah. the countryside. Yeah. So, so the bottom line again is that that we can be part of this creative, this wonderful diversity. It doesn't have to be the Anthropocene problem. Yeah, we come, we come to the ecotone defined by the water's edge all the time. Our industry has evolved there, many of our homes are there, and you know, it's an opportunity to ask us. I, I mentioned earlier that exchange, one, one part of the ecosystem giving to the other yes. across the ecotone. And so, it, yes, we use the abundance water side for all kinds of things. Uh, what are we doing to preserve, protect, and sometimes even give back to those particular habitats? And it's not a question we've tended to ask, right. or we haven't uh, until very modern times, but it's one we really need to consider. And do we, do we always have downstream in mind? Mm, yes. And so then, you know, we have referred to how ecotone can be a metaphor, but it's really not. I mean, there's an ecotone right here. Anytime you're interacting with another person. But yeah, so, so play with that, consider that. Um, look at how the diversity increases when you're around any other person. Yeah. And then, that, you know, there's, it's going on inside us too. Can you speak to that? Well, there are ecotones, I guess, defined by certain systems where one system meets another. Right. Um, you know, certain cellular environments have ecotones, if you will, but I'm not sure I've heard them described in that way. Yeah. Ecotones are more in what I've come to learn. Um, communities, ecosystems that come up against other readily identifiable, unique uh, communities or ecosystems. And so, I think though the human body, this ecosystem of this body, as Mary suggests, coming up against another ecosystem of someone else, mm -hmm. and certainly their mental and their philosophical and their spiritual and their emotional ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah, those those impact us. We've talked before about the energy exchange that goes on between people in ways that we've not yet even figured out how to how to measure and understand. And the just fascinating stuff that's coming out of neuroscience about the ways that we we our, the way our neuro, neurology interacts and we co-regulate. Oh, there went a really loud one. And we co-regulate with each other. Yeah. So, yeah. so, yeah, there you have it. And in that co-regulation, there's the opportunity to create something sustainable, uh, something that benefits not just one or the other, as a zero-sum game, that benefits the system, the entire system. And that's 
what we're leaning toward, hopefully, as a, as a culture in this in this time of incredible threat to a lot of systems with, with climate change and other loss of biodiversity uh, problems. So. So come and join us. I just looked it up on the 10th of September. The 10th of September at six o'clock mountain time. It'll be five o'clock Pacific time and you can figure out the rest. Eight <laughs> o'clock Eastern time, seven o'clock Central time. Wow. Yes, well I done. did it. That's come join us as we start up the deep dive again for this year. We'll look forward to seeing you and talking with you about ecotones. Yes. Thanks for joining us and be well and look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, I will take the chance, I, just to remind you, www.fullycology.com or connect at fullycology.com. All right. Yep. Tell there a was, friend. Yeah, bring a friend. Enjoy the beauty. Find your ecotones. Learn from them and come talk with us about it on the 10th yeah, of September. Love to hear from you. We'll see you soon. Bye for now. Bye for now.